Welcome to yet another Photoshop for iPad Basics. Today we are looking at masks. Masks or layer masks are a common tool in Photoshop. Both the real Photoshop and Photoshop for iPad. In fact, masks or masking exists in a bunch of creative digital software. You see, masks are what makes digital creation magic. And if you're not using masks, then you're about as magic as an uncle with old car tricks on Christmas. Masking is the magic ability to hide or reveal parts of your image without destroying it. That's why you call it non-destructive. In Photoshop, the symbol for a mask is a rectangle with a hole. To add a mask, make sure you're on the layer that you want to mask. Then press the mask icon. Nothing happens with your image, but you now have another layer next to the selected one. That is a representation of your mask. It will only display two colors, black and white. White represents the visible and black the invisible, like hiding in the shade, seeing stuff in daylight. We are going to select the mask, choose the paint bucket, aka fill, and select pure black as your primary color. Tap anywhere on the image to fill your layer mask with black. If you have a keyboard, you can press Command I to invert the layer mask, turning white to black. Our kitten is now interdimensional, somewhere between the planes of existence. Probably scared shitless, so let's bring it back to reality. Select the brush tool and put some visibility potion on it by picking white as your primary color. Either by pressing the two arrows, swiping the color bubbles, or pressing X on your keyboard. If you have other colors selected, pressing D on your keyboard gives you the default black and white setup. Set opacity to 100, hardness to 60, and start painting back that kitten. Look how happy he is to be back. If you paint in something you don't want, just paint with black to hide it again. Pretty simple, right? You can do this for multiple layers to bring in objects to your image or remove objects. Another way to add a mask is from a selection. Make a selection of any kind and press the mask button. Photoshop now creates a mask with only your selection visible. With the right selection method, this is a very fast way to mask in objects. I've made another video on selection tools, so you can learn those in like 5 minutes. If your selection turned out a little rough, finish it with a brush. And remember that masks are non-destructive. You can add or remove parts of your image as you wish, because you're not actually making changes to your image layer, just your mask layer. Now let's have a look at some scenarios where we might want to use masks. So say you'd want to enhance this sunset. By using the eyedropper tool, we can capture our favorite color from the sky. We fill a new layer with this color and put on top of the image. Now we drop down the opacity so we can see the image again. Add a mask and invert it. Use a brush with low opacity and low hardness. Use white as your primary color and paint in more color to any area looking dull. This can also be done with filters and effects, but there are not a ton of those available yet on the iPad. One way to use masks in portraits is to add contrast. Make two copies of the image. Raise the exposure on one and lower it on the other. Rename the brighter to bright and the darker to dark. Add masks to both and fill with black to hide. Use a brush with low opacity. Use white and paint on the bright layer to start emphasizing lighter areas. Do the same for the dark layer. A tip is to switch back and forth between them so you don't paint all the bright areas and then all the dark parts. That tends to make an image look like three different images put together. We want it to look like one great image. Now this is also called dodging and burning, which is just fancy photo language for making dark areas darker and light areas lighter, or emphasizing those differences. There you go, how to use masks and add some magic to your work. 
Hope you found this useful and be sure to check out the Photoshop for iPad playlist up here to learn more basics. Until next time.